Well, here we are in um, Pickles of London for the third edition of the G-Man Talks Boxing. And of course, this is uh, Pickles of London in Dalston in the heart of Hackney. And I'm here with the G-Man himself. And we talked about the heavyweights in the last couple of weeks. We sure did. We sure did. And today we're actually going to talk about the super middles. Now it's just been announced that George Groves. My man, that's my man, George. Your man, George Groves, will be boxing Chris Eubank Jr. at the MEN Arena in Manchester. I believe it's in February. So my question is this, I know boxing's a funny thing. Why is a West Londoner boxing a boxer from Brighton in Manchester? Well, this is a kerfuckle. That means it can happen anywhere. Listen, George has boxed in America. He's boxed <coughs> in Germany. He's boxed there. He's bo it doesn't matter where he boxed. He's a fighter and he's going to go in there. The thing about George, do not underestimate George. Ask James DeGale. James DeGale looked at George and went, Oh, him, Ginger, knock me out. You having a laugh, ain't you? You know what happened? He got stuffed twice. You got to give your opponent respect. Not too much respect, but respect. When George goes, you know, he's a little bit, what you call it, but if you put a cat in a farm box and tell him to fight, the cat will scratch your eyes out. And George grows, he can punch, but he ain't got the confidence to punch. But when he punches, he hurts. So beware, I don't care who he's fighting, I know that he can do the business if you underestimate him. Do not underestimate him at your peril. Now, I, I know from a long time that you've always felt, you personally, G-Man, you've always felt that George Groves has tricks that most British boxers don't. Sure. He has an arsenal of tricks. Some would say it's limited to a feint, mm -hmm. but I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. um, the only person that really found him out was Carl Frotch, and that was thanks to Robert McCracken's um, amazing intuition and insight. my the point. Fight. Carl Frock, that <coughs> fight with Carl Frock, George went in there, he never believed in his mind that he could win that fight. He didn't have that belief. He didn't believe that Frock was on the floor. So when Frock was on the floor, he didn't know what to do. Because he never believed that he could win that fight. Not true belief. Of course not. Everyone would say to him, well, you, you're going to laugh. You. But you know what? Pigs can fly. And when you go in that ring, it's not the best fighter who wins the fight. It's the one who wants to win the fight. And when you underestimate someone in that ring, you will pay the consequences. So but beware. The thing about Eubanks, Eubanks doesn't underestimate anyone. He talks himself up. He comes inside there. He's got the desire. You know, he's got this, he's got that. The thing about it, he's not a puncher like he thinks he is in his own mind. And this is the thing about this fight. One fighter thinks he's a puncher, but he's not really a puncher. The next fighter can punch, but he don't like to punch. And that's George Groves. So that's what makes it, in I'm buying a ticket. This, that's what makes it so interesting. This is the fighter, George Groves. He's like, mm, he can slide down because he's not, mm. and there's another guy who comes in, mm, and ready to go up. But is he? This is a real test for Eubanks. Now, People have questioned, at middleweight, have questioned Chris Eubanks' power. Last time out, he went to Germany and he boxed a German Turk and finished the guy off very easily. Of course, you and I know that Mr. Yildirim mm. um, had a lot of gym fights. Is that what his name is? His, name was, his mm. name was Yildirim, mm. or Yildim, and yeah. he had gym fights. And to the uninitiated, what that is, and it's a habit that exists in <laughs> Europe, where literally a promoter will, will set a fight up in a gym with nobody watching or only a few people. There'll be an official and a referee with a badge and they'll call that a pro fight. Mr. Yildirim had at least six or seven or eight of those out of his 16. So you have to question the record. But in any event, he had a stiff Eubank and he did the business. And he made him look like a stiff. And he made him look like a stiff. You know, it, certain fighters, if you gave him a, a donkey or, or, or throw bread, they'll make it look the same. But you've got to give Eubanks due where he's due. He's got a stiff and he goes out and he shows you what to do with a stiff. Put it on the canvas, stop it. That's what it's all about. None of this running around the business 
do, 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 do. No, he does the business. Put him on the floor. Let, let's look at the topic of natural weight. You always said that Oliver McCall was a natural heavyweight. Sure. As opposed to Evander Holyfield, sure. who wasn't. Sure. Um, Evander Holyfield proved that with the right program that you, you, a cruiserweight can do well at heavyweight. But you have to be an exceptional boxer to do that. Let's talk about Eubank. George Groves has, as, has ascertained in the public that the big disadvantage Chris Eubank has is it's a middle boxing, a big super middle. Oh, and a big super who can punch. Now, we saw that the other week when we had some geese that come out of Swindon, came in, he's a light middle, pumped up, he lift a few weights, pumped up a few of these drinks, some protein drinks, and all of a sudden he was calling himself a super middle. That is not boxing, that is bodybuilding. And you see what happens? He goes to the ring, George tucks him, he throws a punch and George stops him. Boom! Because for the simple reason, because you lift up, because you get on a scale and wear a certain kind of weight, it doesn't make you, this is boxing. This is not bodybuilding. I'm glad we're talking about the super middles because that is one division that this country absolutely dominates in the global rankings on sure. BoxRec. Sure. You know, you've got Callum Smith, you've got Groves, sure. you've got Eubank, you've got Callum Smith, sure. um, and you've got, who's the other super middle? I'm forgetting James DeGale, of course. And the, right? so the, that's champion. the champion. Let's get it right. Yeah. So that's four top class super and middles. Mr. Murray. We have Mr. Murray. Well, he's a, super well he, yes, but we're talking about two, four quality super middles who yeah. dominate four out of the five top ranking. There's some Mexican in there at number something. Yeah. But the four out of the five ranking positions are occupied by four British fighters. Sure. Yeah. So let's just um, reflect on, on, for a minute, on Eubank's uh, ascent into the super middleweight. I mean, it's not like he's boxing a super middle. He's actually boxing a super middle come light heavy, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. You know, this is what makes this so defining. You know, this is an opportunity for, for Eubanks to, to, to really put the mantle out there, for really come out there and say, well, listen, I'm the man. Because he is actually in this fight, he is the opponent. So he has to go out there and he has to, you know, there's certain things he does great. The only thing that he mustn't do is to believe that he is a puncher. What he must do is to work. And that's what he must do, put punches together. Because he ain't gonna take, by the way, you know, people think that George, that he doesn't take a punch well. Well, I don't buy into that. You know, when you look at how Frock destroyed him, it wasn't because of punching power. It was trickery, trickery. And this is what a lot of fighters seem to forget. Trickery, when you can set traps. Well, Frotch, Frotch and McCracken set, set Groves a trap and Groves, you know, fell straight into it in the second fight. That's why he got knocked out. And of course, him being knocked out by Carl Frotch doesn't mean to say that uh, he can't take a shot because he certainly can take a shot. Sure. But what I want to know <coughs> is this. He won the WBO middleweight title against a Russian. Um, mm. Russian was a bit of a plodder, let's mm. face it. Mm. In the old days, mm. back in the day, 20, 30 years ago, mm. the, the guy would have been lucky to be in the top 10. Mm. Um, but would you say that the amount of fights that Groves has had at the very top level now, two, two uh, contests against Carl Froch, um, against the, 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 the Swede who, who, who boxes with Mayweather, I forget his name off the top of my head, Badu Jack, yeah. um, and with James the Gale, yeah, he's, yeah. he's had George Groves. He's had a lot of hard fights. He's had a lot of hard fights. So, yeah. you know, Eubank is, in terms of hard fights, Eubank is definitely the fresher. So, so what is it? Is well, it, you know, you know the th this is what makes you have a reservation about George because George would not let those hands go. But when he let those hands go, they do damage. So the, the criteria is needed for him is for him to let those hands go. He's got a geezer in front of him who's just mm, middleweight, really. Middle, really. And believe you me, if George let those, this is why you can't really put the monarchy on George, but at the same time, you've got to have belief in George because he can dig, he can dig. He just needs to practice letting them go, let them go, let them go. He hurts people. He just lacks confidence of going in there and saying, listen, it's you or me. He don't have that confidence. He don't have that, he has reservation. And that's the difference. You banks don't have reservation. You banks is going to come in there and outsmart him and this and that. And George mustn't allow that to happen. What's going to be interesting in this fight? Two fighters come. One of them is going to be a king, and one of them is going to be a joker. And that's what we're going to find out. Who is the king? Who is the joker? 
Last question. I've looked at the polls. I don't know what the current ones are showing, but I looked at the polls a couple of weeks ago, and amazingly enough, the, the polls on what, one of the polls online, it said that George Groves was, was only 39% verdict in the polls, as opposed to 61% to Eubank. So, that, so at the moment, the boxing public, the general yeah. public, yeah. Are, are voting the election, the pre-election poll is very much in favour of Chris Eubank. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. And he, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I would have thought that, you know, there's arguments on both sides. I know who I'm favouring. Well, you, right? know, you know. But why, you know, <laughs> what, what is it that Chris Eubank has done, as opposed to George Groves, that would make people vote, you know, so overwhelmingly at the moment in predicting a win for him? You know, Eubanks is like his father. He could sell sand to the Arabs. Well, there's the answer. That's the answer. That is the answer. That's the answer. Okay, well, it's in February. I can't remember the exact date, but it's February the 18th, possibly at the MEN Arena. Groves versus um, Chris Eubank. Um, it's, it's, if it, 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 it's definitely worth a pay-per-view shot, I sure, think. Sure, sure. It's a sure. pay-per-view fight. This one, <coughs> this one is, yes. This okay, one. I'm going to ask you now, we're going to wrap up now, because we've got 11 minutes, and a little bit of criticism last week, because it went on 15, 16 minutes. So sure. we're going to wrap up, right? Last question. You know what it's going to be. Prediction, G-Man. You know, this is a toughie. This is a kafuckle. This is definitely a fight. This, listen, this ain't no Golotkin and this ain't no posing going out there demonstration like this is going to be. It's going to be like a, a, a glorified sparring. I mean, these two middleweights the other day who boxed Golotkin. What's the other geezer called? The other ginger head geezer from Mexico. Canelo. Canelo. Those two. I want my money back. Those two went out there and all they were doing posturing. This ain't going to be posturing. This is for real. Let me tell you something, right now, in boxing terms, England has fantastic fighters. And I want everyone to know right now that England has fantastic fighters of any time that I know. So you will see a proper, proper tear up in this fight. Proper tear up. I beg you not. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now finishing the third edition of the G-Man Talks Boxing. We upload every single week around 8 o'clock. Tune in. See you later. See you next week. We'll be back. <laughs>